doing um, tilapia and catfish, which one would you say um, is profitable if I would, if I would put it in that sense? But some are also manages some tilapia farms. Some are also doing catfish. I have to put you on the spot. Among these two, just differentiate for me. Which one do you think is profitable to do? They are all profitable if you manage it. If you manage it, aquaculture is a profitable business. Okay. Online, so if you manage it, well, it's a profitable business. Welcome back to another exciting family looking guy. If it is a first time seeing you, I'm Charles from another channel. We talk about farming here in Africa. Today, I'm here at Atikoku. For those who know this area very well, it's where the animal branch is located. And here, I'm here to visit the farm with a young graduate from the University of um, Cape Coast. I want to say young because he's been in the business for about 10 years now since completing um, UCC. And yes, as a fishery student, he decided to venture into fish farming. I want to listen to his inspiring story of how he started. How the journey has been going to fish farming, the challenges that come with it, and some particular details that you out there and being inspired to start your own fish farm and can also learn about it. Before we get into the video, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Share this video so these people can learn from these inspiring stories. If you're also a fishery student from any of the universities, anyone who is interested in starting their own fish farm can get to learn something about this video. Like and be part of this family. When you like, YouTube gets to promote this video to other viewers to also get to um, watch this video and also learn about some of these inspiring stories and subscribe to be part of the channel. Alright, without much ado, let's get right into the video. So I'm here with uh, Martin. Um, we are here at his fish farm to know how the journey started, how it has been um, farming catfish here in Ghana. So please, can you introduce yourself to my viewers? I'm Martin Sifari. Okay. Uh, 34 year old uh, graduate from UCC. Nice. I ventured into fishes and aquaculture at UCC. And then right from school, I ventured into the industry. Yes. Okay. Okay. From the national service stage till now, I've been in the fisheries and aquaculture industry. Okay. And that's what we've been doing. So as you see, I've done this for uh, close to 10 years now. 10 years? Yes. Wow. Yes. But we didn't start with this. Okay. Yes, we started with tilapia. Yes, we started with tilapia and you know, as the system goes, things change. Okay. Yeah, and you know, tilapia is ongoing, but not as we are doing the catastrophe for now. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I ran a company and we still trade Ghana Limited. And under the company I help others who are interested in the fish farm industry to set up their own fish farms, clean in the backyard or whatever. At every stage you want it, okay. we are able to help you to set it up. So far we have I think seven various farm setups under or also that we run. Okay. Yeah. We run from setup to management to harvest to post harvest. Oh, everything, nice. everything, the whole value chain related. Right. So, it's yeah. like, if someone is yeah. interested in making you come and set up the farm, you can do it. Do it and manage it for the person too. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, so, let me. Okay. So, let me try and understand um, how the journey has been this far. In the first place, what, what motivated you to go and study um, fisheries and aquaculture okay. um, at UCC? I entered UCC in biological sciences. Okay. And, uh, at the third year, you are given the option to choose various courses. So we were taking on a field trip. We were taking on a field trip to because under the uh, the biological science department, we have a faculty, we have different departments, okay. different courses, programs, departments. So uh, we went on a field trip to all the various you know departments, industry that's connected to the various departments. And I remember we visited Akosum Water Research, mm -hmm. this place. Yeah. Yes. And Akosum Water Research is uh, ADEC, it's an aquaculture development center by uh, one by the government fishes commission. Yeah. So yeah. when we got there, it was my first time seeing a very huge fish farm. And I was so excited about it. the ponds and how they were running things. Mm -hmm. uh, it was then I realized that yeah. fish farming is not just a human business, it's yeah. something that uh, one can really venture into it as a full-time you know, business and do well into it. So I decided to major in that program, major in the fisheries and agriculture program. Okay. But then after that, 
I see how I can venture into it. So I did the program, and after that, uh, I got some funding from him to, and I, a, 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 a partner, a friend who also did the same, the same program. Course. Okay. Yes, he was also, you know, he also so had the like same passion. Yes, after school trying to do something. Yes, we had the same passion, and you know, we decided to. Um, and he actually did his uh, with, uh, national service at the Aquaculture, oh, so okay. Aku, Aku oh, at the okay. uh, Aquaculture Center, okay. the Development Center. So uh, he had a lot of experience from there on the field. Okay. And I did my service at Fishes Commission, Tema. Oh, nice. nice so nice. also had a bit of experience. Yeah, experience from there. Over there. So the two of us coming together, we started work. Yeah, but we started the tilapia. Mm -hmm. And as since we were going up you now, there were a whole lot of challenges that was beyond our control at, at the, the start beginning. Yes, okay. at a startup. So we had to sit back, lay back, close the tilapia for some time, then know how we can get back into business. And we did that and getting back into business, we decided to venture into catfish. In catfish. Ah, so the Akosombo side it was mainly tilapia, that's what they were into, or they were doing different types of fishing? The Akosombo, uh, the Water Research Centre is Aquaculture Development Centre. Okay. So they develop everything aquaculture. But now the species of fish that they are developing is the catfish and the tilapia. Okay. But the tilapia is what they started with and they developed it for, you know, with the tilapia, they've gone far with it. With the rest yes, of with everything. So if you even want to have a training, if you want to go into fish farming and you want to have a training with certificate and everything, they, they do it there. You can go there, they will train you, they'll train you, oh, they'll nice, give nice, you nice. everything that you need. Then they even sell fingerlings, I think the tilapia fingerlings, but blue stock as well. But okay. I don't know for catfish from that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They are commercial uh, hatcheries and other things around. Oh. They are for the government. Oh, yes. okay. Uh -huh. okay. So they are not purposely established for commercial purposes. Mm -hmm. It's a research center. Yes, but they do, you know, commercialize some of oh, their, the things they do. Yeah, yeah. So they, let, just run me through a little bit of the challenges that came with the tilapia when you started. Yes. Because you have some yeah. beginners who also want to look at the option of either catfish or tilapia. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. don't know which options to go to for. go in. For. So let me know. Since you went through that, you know some of the challenges that came with that. Can you take us through? Okay. The time, the time we were starting our fish farm, we didn't have the the option of. Uh, to choose between the catfish and the tilapia because the tilapia was already developed and we had experience with the tilapia already before we decided to venture okay. into it. And uh, one thing is the tilapia, each of the fish species, the environment that you choose to rear them will determine how you go about it. That's for the tilapia. And the catfish, okay. every speech, uh, fish species, because their physiology is different. Mm. You see, the way they behave and everything yeah, is different. different. So, uh, depending on their physiology, will determine, and the environment you are going to culture them in will determine the management practice and mm. the things you have to put in place. Okay. So we were, and so far, when you want to venture into the tilapia business, the optimal uh, system, the most successful system that you can use is the cage system that we float on the water lake. Oh, okay, that's for the tilapia. Yeah, for the seen, tilapia. Seen, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. that is the most efficient system that we okay. use for the tilapia. Because the water lake is their natural environment. You see? Yeah. And one other thing is, with the lake and the dugout pond and the tanks and all that, tilapia, you know, the fish, when you put them together like that, you have both sexes in there, that's the male and the female. Mm -hmm. With the tilapia, they do inbreeding. They do inbreeding. So when you put them in a dugout pond, a tank, or any holding capacity like that, they will do inbreeding and it will make your management very difficult. Because, for example, you stock thousand. After a month, they've inbreeded and they've, you know, the eggs hatched. The and you have, yes, and you have a lot, about 10,000. How are you going to feed? Perhaps you plan to feed the thousand. And you don't even have the capacity to take the excess out you see yeah. so the best and efficient system was the cage system and you know the water lake too is zoned we have the upstream the dam and the downstream okay. the upstream is beyond the akosomo dam 
that's where the fresh water comes okay. from the source. Okay. And the, after the dam, that's the Akushimo Dam and the Akushi Dam, the basin in there is the dam. Like that basin, the water that's we have That's where the dam itself stretches. Yes. And if Akushimo Dam is closed and Akushi Dam is closed, all the inflows remain in the water. Mm. So the water quality in that stretch gets bad. I get, I get, I know so that during our time, some farmers didn't know this, and they were floating cages here. They they were putting a lot of investment in there, and one day, just a day, the water goes bad, and all your fish are gone. So as a startup, when you're faced with such a challenge, you can't, can't continue. Okay, you so see? it means those who are having their fish cages in between the Akosu mode one and the Akosu one, like they were having between... water quality issues. Okay. And still, some have their cake in there, but those people perhaps they've studied the environment and they know how to manage Not themselves about. around it. But it wasn't a good location for us. So we started here and we, were, we had challenges. So we later moved to the upstream. Okay. And upstream too has its own challenges. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, okay. The upstream too has its own challenges. At the upstream, the water surface area is broad. You see, so the cages that we float, when you are not able to give it heavy anchors, okay. wind blows them away. Sure, sure. Sometimes the winds even break the cages. Wow. Yes, the metal galvanized pipe, it shakes them like that. You know, it's welded together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, it shakes them like that, then it breaks the cages. Before you realize your cage is gone, your fish is gone. Nice. You see, you. so those are the challenges that we face with the tilapia. Okay. And the general challenge, marketing. It's not like you don't have the market for the fish. Ghana, we have a consumption, like a demand gap, demand and supply gap of about 400,000 metric tons. The demand and supply gap of 400,000 metric tons of fish annually. Wow. Yes. And we can't, we can't dwell on importation to, to bridge that yes. gap. Yes. It's only aquaculture. So when you have your fish ready, the market there's no problem. But pricing, Affecting. pricing and the marketing strategy, it affects the farmers a lot. So if it doesn't go well for you, you may not be able to continue. Mm. You may not be able to continue because there's no regulation, there's no system, you know, standards to, a farmer may decide to price his own fish depending on how you know how he feels, he feels yeah, 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 yeah there's no as for pricing i understand there's no understand. standardized price yeah all cattle fish are like, something. Yes. Nothing like someone that someone can reduce the grade and yeah, a buyer yeah, yeah. a buyer will be bargaining based on that price i get you i get you, you. Now, sometimes the, the farmer will be found wanting you you know would they have a choice to sell and either you. break even or get his money and go and sit somewhere you see true, yes true, true, true. and right now there are other ways you are trying to, you know, bring in to help with the marketing issue. Okay. Yes. You know, you know, agro processing, when you process agro products, you add, yeah, you add value. Yeah, you add value. So you can also sell and get more. So those who are able to smoke their fish and sell, they are, making, they are making something. So you let, let, let's come back a bit. I know you've zoomed into the challenges yeah. straight away. So for, uh, for um, tilapia farming, I've quite a number of videos on that. Yeah. I think I visited some farmers along the stretch yeah. from this year uh, at Kuse yeah. and all of that, why yeah. to Tilapia and all of that. Yes. So if any of you want to go and learn about that one too, I'll link the video in the description side so you can check that, those ones out. Yeah. But here yeah, I'm focusing on catfish. Yeah. I want to know, um, how long did you guys transition from the Tilapia to the catfish? When has the catfish started? Like when did they start? You know, catfish has been with us, has been with us since aquaculture has been around. Yeah. But the thing is, the rate at which people you know, are venturing into it. Uh, now, looking at the growth rate for the past five years, I think it's, 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 it's good, it's very encouraging. People yeah. are really venturing into it. People are really venturing, especially the youth. Yeah. They are venturing into the catfish. And uh, now, no, all the other aspects, like the value chain in the catfish farming, you can get everything, you can easily get it accessible and available with us unlike first it was difficult to get it was very difficult to get far, uh, catfish farm inputs 
because the Nigerians were doing it a lot. So sometimes, if someone wants to purchase blue stock to start a small hatchery, they have to go as far as Nigeria, Nigeria to, go and get to get a correct blue stock. Like the, you know, because one essential thing about farming, catch, uh, fish farming in general, is the seed. Okay. The seed. That's the blue stock that you use to produce your finger. Yeah. Yes, if you have quality blue stock, you get quality finger. Then, with, talking about quality finger leads to, you know, the quality parameters I'm talking about, yeah. you know, disease resistant, fast growth rates, you know, and all those things, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Yeah. So, I want to know how long have you been doing the catfish itself? Personally? Yeah, personally. Oh, it's been four years. Four years, yes. It's oh, that's four nice. Years. That's, nice. that's after you guys stopped the tilapia? Is it the tilapia, personally, we closed our farm, but I was still working with some tilapia farms. Okay. Yeah, yes. doing management and other things for them. But personally, the setup for the catfish farms that I started doing for people and I started doing for uh, for the past four years. Mm. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's been okay. four years now since we started establishing for people and doing all that. Sure, sure. Okay, so um, doing um, tilapia and catfish, which one would you say? Um, it's profitable if I would, if I put it in that sense. But someone also manages some tilapia farms. Someone also doing catfish. I have to put you on the spot. Among these two, just differentiate for me. Which one do you think is profitable to do? They are all profitable if you manage it. If you manage it well, aquaculture is a profitable business. Okay. I don't like to, if you manage it well, it's a profitable business. Yeah, even with the tilapia, if you manage because the challenges I was talking about, they are manageable. Mm -hmm. If you have the capacity to manage them well. It's profitable. Okay. It's very profitable. Okay. And there's demand for there's both demand of them. for fish. Demand for fish. But I know yes. some people to complain that oh they have fishes, they are not getting people to buy. These are some of the challenges that people also complain about. Yes, that was yes, I was yeah, that was what I was talking about with the pricing. If they are not getting people to buy, it's probably because of the pricing. The pricing. They are not ready to receive to take the price that you are giving they to are them. giving to them at that moment. Because they will be looking at their cost of production. You know the things that has gone into it and the price you are coming to give probably they may not be make anything mm. so they will wait for a good price and they that was when they will be complaining but they should use have, in the water too you are feeding, them, are feeding are them in carrying more costs so that's the it all comes back to the management so you should know when to sell your fish and you should know what has gone into it mm. then when to sell so that you will not be losing Okay. You understand? Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm. okay. So we look at the second. We look at the management. How to go about it? Yeah. Uh, some detailed information about it in the subsequent videos. So that, um, if someone wants to start, or if you are starting the this catfish, how much did this cost? What's the cost? Uh, the capital involved in starting the um, catfish? If you give an estimate for us. Fish farming is a very capital intensive, you know, venture. Okay. It's a very capital intensive venture, and depending on. Uh, the system you want to run, the, the cost will depend on the system you want to run. Okay. Yes, because uh, this is not the only system that you can use to run a catfish farm. You can decide to do the, gut, the dugout pond. Yeah, yeah. You can decide to do the concrete tanks, and you can decide to do the tarpaulin tanks. Yeah. The, the ponds. This one is quite recent, you know, modern. Yeah, yeah, the tarpaulin pond. Because most people are using yeah, that yes, one most of the more, time. Because of land management and other. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, in terms of the costing, you know, I don't know. I can't generalize it. You understand? Because someone may decide to go into that gout pond, and the labor that may incur mm. in digging the dug out pond you know, will differ from yeah. locations. The person will come and do the digging and all yes, that. Yes, it will differ from location. It will differ because those. Work uh, definitely workmanship in the city wouldn't be the same as the village. Yeah, definitely. Yes, and so the labor that you use mm -hmm. and uh, other things, other inputs, variable inputs, that will determine up. yes the cost. So uh, there are some costs. That one there is general. That's the feed cost and the cost of finger lens. That one there is general. Okay. Uh, and that one, that one we can talk about that one, but. Uh, to say that I'm this is how much. I'm talking about the setup. Like, listen, you see, for some, some of my watching this video, okay, you are seeing the setup you have here. He may also be just okay. I want to have something similar. To okay, okay. So, here. so what's the estimate of? Yeah, like, so, so, here? so we can do an estimate for let's say a ten by ten tarpaulin tank. Okay. A ten by ten tarpaulin tank to run it to finish 
will cost you 12,000 Ghana cities. As in one by... The setup, 12, 10 by 10. One 10 by one 10. One 10 by 10 for The setup and the running it for one production period. Okay, okay. Yes. So let, let's break the production process. So let's say from the, the point months. from fingerlings to the end of yes. the six months period. Yes, six, okay. seven months period before you sell. Okay. Is it with feeding and everything? Everything. Okay. Everything. So with the feed, um, how, how much does the feed go for if you are to, let's say for one production period you're talking about, how much do you want to estimate for the feeding? Okay, let's say for a uh, thousand stocking density okay. of catfish, to get them to maturity, it will cost you around 7,000 to 8,000 dollars. Wow, with the feed and everything? Yeah, with feed. That's feeding. Feeding just for them? Yes. Okay. Feeding for them. 8,000 Ghana cities. That's the feeding. Because of the cost of feed now. How much are a bag go for? And which feed do you use? Averagely, here? averagely, a bag would be 250. You don't use one particular feed. We have Ranan, we have uh, Kujis, Enampa, and uh, Coppins. Yeah, Coppins. Yes, the foreign one. And Ilagua. Okay. Like, well, the foreign ones. So, depending, you know, normally the foreign ones they have high protein content. So we start with them to boost their initial growth rate before we fall on the local, the local ones. For yes. them. Yeah. Yeah. The foreign ones, obviously, like more expensive than more the local expensive. ones. Yes. Sure, 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 sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So we'll be zooming into so the second video. So the what goes into the twelve thousand? You the ten by ten tarpaulin tank will cost. Let's say between three thousand to four thousand. Okay. Ten by ten. Okay. Yes. Then with the feeding and everything. Then the feed, let's say eight thousand comes in. Then fingerlings, cost of thousand fingerlings. And normally we prefer stocking juveniles. Than the normal fingerlings. Yes. Than that's, the normal that's fingerlings. That's one advice almost every. Yes. But fingerlings they are difficult to take care to of. To manage. Yes. Yes. Around the street. Yes. It's true. So if you are a starter and are watching, don't don't try with fingerlings because mm -hmm. to give you troubles, you can yes. easily lose them and all of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one is very true. So yeah, so twelve thousand from finger layer from point of where you start to the end and the feeding to yes. is two fifty. The two fifty, let me know what what's the kg of the two fifty? The two fifty would be the feed we have the fifteen kg and the twenty kg. Okay. Uh -huh. So I, I some are three hundred to below two fifty, so I just use the two fifty as the average okay. Okay. you know, average yeah, cost per bag. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know the as we said the starters they are very expensive mm -hmm. so you start some even cost as much as 400 cities mm -hmm. or more uh -huh. okay. for 20 kilos yeah and we have some that are 15 kilos that's the ranan that's 50 kilos and that one is 240 cities oh, okay. uh, that's for the mature sizes yeah that's from 4 mm going yeah Upwards. Upwards. Okay. and the others that are two 80 something, 290 something, you know, 295, 285. So, average, I use the 250 as the average. Okay. Yes. Okay. As the average. So, I, I keep getting, so now you know, you spoke about challenges of tilapia. Yeah. Now, but running a catfish um, farm or a catfish business, what do you say are some of the main challenges that you face? Or you feel most catfish farmers face when it comes to running a catfish business? Right now, <laughs> one major challenge with fish farmers in general in Ghana is, you know, education. Because education goes a long way when you are well educated in the What's thing you are doing. doing yeah. It goes a long way to help you solve a lot of issues. And you know, uh, animal farming, one major issue with it is disease control. Mm -hmm. Disease control. And <laughs> every fish farm will tell you the mortalities that happens, all of that is because of disease. So if you don't know the type of disease that has affected your fish and how to control it, you can found one thing, you can lose a lot. You see, so one major challenge is diseases. Diseases in catfish farming. Okay. Yes, and we can talk about the crackhead disease. That's crackhead where you see. Yeah. How, how, how does that one affect them? That one, you know, uh, and so, first we can talk about the causes of diseases in the in the catfish. You know, it may be because of pathogens from the environment that you are operating. The pathogens may affect the water, or it may be from, you know, uh, the fish their resistance level. Because you may be giving them, you know, a feed which doesn't have the right minerals and vitamins to give them that immune 
to prevent uh, yeah, them from to, yeah to give them that new level to prevent them to be resistant to diseases mm -hmm. you see so yeah. you check the feed quality you are giving okay. then the pathogens from environment also causes and also uh, the water how frequent you change the water okay because when they remain in the water for a long time and the water goes bad it can tend to also affect them you see so fish farming one major thing you should be doing a lot is monitoring you monitor their physiology so that you know when they are behaving awkward they know that okay let me check if they have been affected by a disease then you know the type of disease which is affected which has affected them and also the treatment that you give to them to them you see yeah so that's a major challenge and the general challenge you know finance like yeah, yeah finance finance because Sometimes even uh, and one other thing, inputs. You see, now there are diseases that the treatment, you know, it doesn't cost much. That's the ones we use beta leaf and, and those ones. Yeah. But can but, you name some of the um, most frequent kind of disease that affects them and maybe some suggested solutions a bit yeah. that comes with them? Yeah, with the crackhead like this. That one, the same thing is you see the the the, the scar the head parts, you see a, that reddish uh, the head parts, like the, uh, the utmost part of the eye, mm -hmm. you see it turning red, like a saw. Oh, okay. uh -huh, at, the, at the head part of the fish, that one. And the moment they get infected, it will, the red will, you know, it will eat into the scar. And once it eats into the scar, Can it, it, it dies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once it eats into the scar, it will definitely die. So when you see it like that, for the crackhead, when you see, you first of all have to drain all the water out. And you stop feeding the fish. Mm. One thing is when you see your fish being infected with any disease, you take water out, you stop feeding them for some days, a day or two. Then you do the treatment for them, for, for them. So you see that they are doing it before you can start feeding. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because when they are infected with a disease, their immune system, everything is down. You don't pressure and them with, with yeah. You see. Sure, yeah, sure, so sure. you don't feed. And we have a uh, done this in catfish too that's yeah. where you see their swollen abdomen yellowish like that that one too is caused by similar issues so that one too, you take the water out then you can you can do the leaf treatment for them yeah. and with the crackhead too you can do salt bath treatment salt and yes and salt solution yes. For them. Okay. yes and there are other chemicals on the market that you can buy to apply for them to treat them yeah mm. As the, uh, for example, we have this Fluxino 20. Yeah, it's very efficient, yeah. efficient and potent for the treatment of such diseases. Yeah, and beta leaf too, you know, is purely organic and is good to treat such diseases as well. Yeah. So those are some of the common yeah. ones. Yeah, you can think of. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's be clear up on them. So, um, yeah. someone is watching that. He's interested in maybe from our conversation. He wants to start catfish and all that. What is that one advice you give to the person who wants to venture into catfish farming? Yeah, I, I already, <laughs> I've already touch made, the, yeah, yeah, touch, but let me put them together. You see, the first thing the person must take into consideration is the location. You see, we didn't locate our site here by chance. You see, one thing is, when you're running a tapoli system like this, you need a lot of water. You do a lot of water circulation, changing water changing. Yes. Yeah. And imagine if you're in Accra and you are buying water. water. The cost of water alone will surpass the cost of feeding mm. because you'll be buying water every week no. so yeah. your cost of water imagine you're buying about 300 cities cost of water every week Crazy. you see yeah. it will eventually surpass your cost of feeding and cost of water is not something you must even you, yeah, more cost you know cost yeah, yeah. when you are doing your expenses for 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 for, 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 for the farming so locating our uh, farm like here like this you have the water in abundance yeah yeah, yeah. it's from the dam over here yes you see so one thing is you look at your environment and the things you must factor in looking at the environment is water source of water source of quality water not just any, any water water, water yes. that is free from pathogens you see Chlorine, yeah iron things. and those heavy metal poisoning and those stuff yeah. minerals yeah. yeah then also uh, security proximity to human settlement and, and yeah and also you cite it at the place that all the other inputs you must you, you you can easily 
you know, assess it. Yeah. Imagine you have a farm somewhere, and when you are buying feed, it must cost you a lot to convey your feed to, to your the farm. space. Yeah, you incur transportation costs. You incur cost transportation like costs. Yeah. So you consider all of that. Okay. And also, when you want to go into it, after you've secured your site and everything, you look at um, if you want to buy juveniles or fingerlings, you look at the seed very, very, very. You have to take very, you pay much attention to it. Where you are getting them? Where you are getting? Where you are getting them from? Okay. 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 You go, you may you may stock. <laughs> you you will be feeding them. The growth rate wouldn't be helping. Mm. So eventually you lose. You lose that. Ah, very true. Yes, eventually you lose. Okay. So you check your seed. Then also your management skill. Your management skill. If you don't have any knowledge at all, you have to learn. Mm. Yes, because fish farm, the feed that we give them, we even calculate. There's a feed chart. That yeah, as a yeah, fish, fish farmer, yeah, 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 you yeah, must yeah. know. The ratios and all of that. You see, we did sampling today. So the weight that we have, we are going to use it to calculate the feed they'll be eating daily for the next month for them. Okay. So that we can purchase in bulk. You see. Yeah. So you must learn all those things. Sure. You see? sure, sure yes. Sure, sure, sure. So um, if you want to learn more about it, in the second video, we're we'll looking at more details, how yeah. to start some information that will be useful to you, even with the feeding, we're going to details and types of retouch based on all of those things. So the last one is there are more YouTube are watching us who and there's no jobs. Yeah. People are not finding things to do. Be happy so you be, be kind of. But they don't know what to actually do. Mm. Um, what advice would you give to the youth of today if they are if you are speaking to them, mm. what advice would you say you would give to them? As I said, aquaculture is a very lucrative venture. It's a very a very lucrative venture that if it's giving the needed attention, I believe it will go a long way to solve this youth unemployment issue we have in the country. Yes, it will go a very long way because one small scale farm can employ from one to five staff full time. Yeah. You see, in the medium scale, if you have, let's say, about hundreds of those small and medium scales all over, it go a long way to help this, you know, unemployment issue. And if you are a youth and you have interest in it and you want to go into it, this 12,000 that I mentioned, it's not small, yeah, but, but there are small, yeah, small ways. Yeah, there are small ways you can also go into it. Okay. You understand? There are yeah. small ways you can go into. It. Maybe you have a good water source in the house. Even if you have pipe, normal gov uh, Ghana pipe water, water pipe yeah. water, you can use it. But that one, there are ways to treat it to, to use. It, you know how you? There are ways you go about it in yeah. using it. Yeah. So if you have it and you want to start something small at your backyard. You may not be able to afford the 12,000 capacity with everything. So you can go in for this. You know, they have this white uh, poly tank, this yeah, white yeah, tank the tanks, with yeah, the yeah. metal frame around, around it. it. Yeah, yeah. You can decide to get one can and you know, start with, let's say, 100, 150 catfish. Then manage it in your own way. Definitely by the time you sell, you will get something to, you know, continue. Sure. And if someone sees what you've done and they have interest, they may even decide to help you support, support you to you expand yeah. i i will tell you that if you have the interest or you have the passion for it you may not you know have the chance or capacity to get huge sums of money to start but your small way you can start it in a small way you can start it yeah yes and i will encourage everybody who has the passion to start something like that to go into it you won't regret you will never regret at all and, and, and also the you know the aquaculture industry the whole lot of value chain in it it's not necessarily just the farming okay you see you can decide to also go into the hatchery system whereby you only hatch the fingerlings go and them supply to, those supply to the farmers yeah. Yeah. and you can also decide to go into the marketing right now we have point and kill uh, joints pop around all over so you can decide to you know do procurement for them you go to farmers, buy from, them. buy from them at a rate, go and sell supply to this joint restaurant, hotels, all those people yeah. at a rate. You are not farming, but you'll be getting something. Sure. People are doing it and they are making it. Yeah. You see? Yeah. So sometimes too, you can, you know, 
uh, there are people who also buy the fish they smoke them they process them they even you know the fish you can you can get fish oil from his gut mm. those who smoke it they they take fish, fish oil, oil from his gut so you can go into the algo processing of the fish being it catfish tilapia can decide to smoke it then take it to the market so you can buy from the farmers smoke it yourself package it then you also sell to make money so there's a whole lot of value chain around it someone can also decide to because right now farmers are struggling with feeding so someone can decide to venture into feed production like low cost of feed production or maybe give us an alternative you know, venture into an alternative ways to feed our fish because you know in advance world they have ways that they feed their fish not solely depending on fish uh, this fish feed that we buy mm. people grow worms oh, wow. yeah they grow worms from uh, they call this dark 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 uh, dark horse fly or something there's this dark horse um, fly uh, oh. those bigger 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 yeah, flies yeah, yeah, yeah. i've seen that seen on, most people used to even feed their poultry, poultry yes animals. so yeah, they yeah. grow worms and yeah there's a name for it yeah, yeah uh, i know what you're talking about maggots yeah, yeah. maggots be no, like that big about. big maggots yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so someone can decide to lend adventure into that just do that and supply farmers farmers will buy True. yes True. myself sometimes we buy with you you know with you nah, that? one man thousand the small small one man thousand fish, small, fish yeah, the yeah. fresh one we buy from them give to the fish oh okay and they consume yes they, it's very good for them because when they are in the natural water that's why they eat ah yeah yeah so i supplement it with the normal feed that we buy but it's not it? every day sure, that we buy because sure. that one is too expensive yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you see and okay, okay. You see. so someone can decide to venture into something like that so the whole lot of value chain around the aquaculture not just the farming alone yeah, yeah. yeah. okay so as he said yes there's a lot of value chain around it um you might not necessarily own your farm like this or have the twelve thousand cities to start something like this but at least you can enter into any of the value chain process and yeah you can make some few returns from it other than sitting at home not knowing what to do okay so we'll end this video here in the next video we are going to look at how one can start information when it comes to feeding water management the pond everything basically about cattle farming that will be useful to you so you to learn about it so if you want to learn more about it make sure you catch me in the next video where we look uh, take care or go into details when it comes to that all right very end of the video make sure you like comment share and subscribe let me know your comment let me know your thoughts what your experience to has been um farming catfish whatever it is you want to share with us on catfish farm let's just know your comments in the comment section like this video and subscribe and i'll see you all in the next one peace out